is I'm going to set up the irrigation over there so that I can water three individual plants plus actually the center section here, but then I'm going to use two other ones for something very cool. Hi guys. I have finally reached the point this spring that it is time to install some irrigation. Now, we have our permanent irrigation lines already installed. They've been here for several years. And unless you've ever worked with these, I'm finding that some people are a little intimidated by them, but they're really quite simple. Let me take the top of this off. It just unscrews. And the only thing you have to be careful about is that there is a tiny little washer that's right in there. So I just always leave it face up so that I can't lose that. I'll take a close up of this to show you later. All you do is unscrew the top and then there's this little screen here. Now the purpose of the screen is that if you get dirt particles or uh, mineral deposits or anything else that crystallize in your water system, this will catch them and hopefully prevent them from going into the individual irrigation lines. Irrigation lines can, <laughs> irrigation lines can become blocked over time through mineralization and dirt and things like that. So I try to always be very careful about that. And I've had some people say, well, just wash them in vinegar. I have thought about it. If I was really desperate, I would. It's like if I really couldn't afford to buy new irrigation lines. But I find that most irrigation lines are good for, in our area, probably two or three years. And then the plastic becomes less flexible and the little holes where the water comes out tend to clog up for minerals. So I figure on one or two years, and I know there's some times when it seems to go better than that, but I don't like to have to count on that. And I always pay attention to my irrigation to make sure it's working correctly. Now, what I have in this situation is actually three different setups. I have small lines like this that are going to individual plants. I have two rosemary plants in this bed, and I have a tickweed that's out actually in the aisle because it seeded there several years ago, and I've actually taken pieces of it and moved them other places, but that keeps coming back and it does a beautiful job of being covered with flowers all summer. So I give it some water. And all I do for that is I take this small line like this, I cut a piece that's long enough to get to where I want it to go, and then I assemble it. Now, that shows the whole area I'm working with. The irrigation, the, the center of the bed that's over here is a completely enclosed structure. In other words, the rodents can't get in from underneath. They have to come in from the top. <laughs> and most of the gophers prefer to stay under the ground most of the time. So I have my iris that was gifted to me in there, and I also have rosemary in there. I have in the past also put an occasional annual flower in there. Now that I have the iris in there, I'll have to think about whether I want to do that or not. I think the iris are coming in really well, and I added bone meal, I guess it was, last bone meal or blood meal. I'll have to check and see which one it should have been. Whichever was supposed to be, I added that last fall when I planted these and watered it in really well because I know that the soil around here can be very infertile when it comes to uh, growing just about anything. This is pretty much your average irrigation head. It's made by Dig, it's made by Rainbird. There's a bunch of different companies. The top screws off. The bottom is screwed onto a piece of PVC pipe. It sticks up like that, just like the one I showed you before. It has the screen, and then it has all these little, I think of them as stations. There are little locations where water will be going down into hoses, pipes, call them what you will, 
to go to individual plants or to rows of plants. Now, this one in particular has little black itty bitty screens. Those can come out. I try to be careful about them. You don't want to lose them. You could buy replacements if you do lose them, but it's just so much easier not to lose them. Now, what this does for you is this gives you the ability to shut off water to these individual locations. And that is done with a little cap. Now I conveniently have quite a collection of irrigation pieces because we use drip irrigation a lot in our yard and have for multiple years. So I keep all my drip irrigation pieces in a box conveniently marked drip irrigation pieces. Now when you buy one of these sets, it will come with the top, it will come with everything that you see in here, and it will come with a set of these little caps. And these caps are simply pushed down into the little round holes. Now you can see where I put one there. And that stops the water from going down. If I want to attach the larger hoses, which are usually a quarter of an inch in diameter, that have, here's an example, this sort of stuff. It has built-in emitters and it will put water out at every one of those emitters along the entire length. If I want to attach something like that, I need to use a little connector. They come in different colors, just like these things here come in different colors too. Some of them are pinky purple. There's a pinky purple one. Some of them are black. But these simply go into the holes in the bottom of this. You see, if you look at the bottom of that, it's got holes in it. And you're just going to simply slide them in. You don't need to glue them in. Please don't glue them in. If you glue them in, they won't ever come out. These eventually will break. And when I say eventually, I mean a year, sometimes two. If you're careless, if you were to, for instance, trip over the drip irrigation line, you might break this because you don't usually break this. This is very sturdy. Um, these can become slightly fragile over time from the UV, but they're easy to pull out with a pair of pliers and you put a new one on. So when it's time to actually attach some sort of a little hose to this, I would take my hose and I would take that and slide it on. Now, the big trick with this, and it sounds silly, is spit on it. Spit on this and then slide it in. It provides just enough lubrication and you twist it when you slide it in. It provides just enough lubrication to help you get that hose on there. You want it so that it goes up Let's see, see if you wear this little lip piece here, you want it to go past that point, preferably all the way to this. But as long as you can get it past here, it'll be fine, it will stay on. If you find yourself dealing with hose that has become either stiff because of the temperature, that's easy to solve. Get yourself a hot glass of water or a hot mug of water, dip it in for a second, it'll soften up the hose and then you can slide it on easier. Or you can wait until it's a little later in the day and the sun's been on it or something like that. If it's been, if it's become stiff because of UV, spit on it. <laughs> usually it's not a big problem. You can usually get it on there without any huge amount of problem. And you have to make sure that, say I want the water to come up through here because that's where it's coming and then it's going to go down through there right next to that one there. I need to make sure that when I add one of these I add it in the correct hole. Everybody screws up on that some point. Everything's got to be connected together otherwise it's like having no hose connected to your hose bib and expecting water to come out of it. It's not going to happen. So it's not hard. You just need to pay attention you double check things before you start things up and it works fine. It's easy if you screw up to move the little caps to a different location and that's what I suggest you do. Don't move these. Once these are plugged in there, it's a little stiff. It's not impossible to move them, but you're better off changing the cap locations than you are changing the pieces that go into the bottom. It's just less likely to break anything and way faster. So, 
what I'm going to do is uh, for this bed is I'm going to set up the irrigation over there so that I can water three individual plants plus something else very plus actually the center section here I've got a um, two irrigation lines for that so that's three plants <laughs> plus two irrigation lines to the center that's five right there this is a 12 station outlet so I can have up to 12 lines that come off of this and it will work just fine so I'm only using five right now but then I'm going to use two two other ones for something very cool Now what I'm going to do is show you sort of from a distance here what I'm doing and I'll also do a close-up view and I know I just dropped a cap on the floor ah there it is uh, fortunately black shows up pretty well on this <laughs> okay now I mentioned that I'm watering three individual plants so I've already stuck when I use this small hose, I don't need to use a special connector. I literally just slide it into the hole in the bottom of this irrigation head. So I've got one there that goes to that plant over there, one here that goes to a, a rosemary plant over there, another one here that goes to another rosemary plant. Now, that means I only want to have five of these little spaces open. So I'm going to put caps on the ones that I don't have in use. So we've got those three. Now there's already irrigation lines that have been placed here in this center bed. There's the two irrigation lines there. And I'll give you a close up to show how I sort of loop them around and also how I hold them in place. Now there are two kinds of stakes that are commonly used for holding these things in place. Those are the most commonly used types of stakes. This is obviously used for the tiny, tiny little line that's used for the individual plants. And this is used for the larger line that goes and covers a whole bunch of area at once. Now I'm doing what I would call a permanent installation for this portion of the garden. It's looped in there the way it should be. I've got two individual feed tubes for the rosemary. I may change them up later, so I'm not going to be staking that at all here. This line over here is also not being staked because it's sort of a temporary installation until I get this section of the garden redug. So I don't want to be attaching it to anything when I'm just going to have to move it anyway. It's not in the way, it's not going to be tripped over, so that's not a problem. Now, this next thing I'm going to do, I consider it to be a pretty cool hack that I figured out a couple of years ago. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this and I'm going to insert it in the bottom hole, just like I said, there we go. And then I'm going to bring it over here. And the reason I'm going to bring it over here is I set up irrigation lines to fill my bird baths. We actually have so many birds that come to see us in the summertime that not only will they drink all the water, but the rest of it will evaporate. So what I do is I take an irrigation line like this and I run it to these bird baths. Now you may notice that these bird baths are pretty funny looking. There we go. Now that may look a little odd and that's because it is. This is the original bird bath. Um, it lasted exactly one year. It uh, appeared to be copper and it was listed on the package as being copper. I didn't think anything of that. Uh, what it really was was copper plated steel of some sort, cheap steel. So I have old frying pans. These are old, well this one happens to be a Calphalon, when, nothing against Calphalon, but eventually they peel. And when they start to peel, 
we no longer use these, but we did when we first moved here. When they start to peel, they become a liability. You don't want to eat that. It's not good for you. But I figure it's fine for a bird to take a bath in, and I figure they also don't drink enough out of here that it would be a problem. So I stick a frying pan in the old bird bath, and it works fine. They also like to land on here, which is kind of funny. Uh, and you'll notice these are kind of bent. That's because in the wintertime I break the ice out and put warm water in the bird bath. Anyway, the trick is, in order to make this work, you need, it's a regular uh, clip like you would use in an office to uh, hold papers together. And what I do is I put that clip on the edge or the bird bath, like that. Then I decide how long my hose needs to be. Gonna make this a little longer because I may run it off to the edge later. So I'm not gonna make it tight. And also once I get my permanent garden set up in here, I will be running this up the stand. You can cut this stuff with a scissor, a knife, just about anything, it's not tough. If I get a little clip, same type of clip, just smaller, clamp it on here, stick the hose through. Now because this is smaller, you can actually kind of cram it down in there. And now you notice I can really control exactly where that water's going in. And it works like a charm. I run this usually once in the morning and then again, two or three in the afternoon once it gets to be summertime. I'll do the same thing on this one. Because right now I've just been water, I've just been filling these in the morning and that's enough. Just like the other one, this gets slid into the hole at the bottom and pushed in as far as it'll go. Now you notice I hold it with one hand while I push with the other. Now, all I need to do is make sure that the inlets for the water for each one of these is open. You can see with this particular irrigation head, the little miniature screens that go to the individual lines happen to be purple, which is great because it shows you really easily where they all are. If you could see really closely, each one of those has tiny little slits in it. And make sure that they're all in there nice and even. And the rest of these all have caps on them. And that keeps the water from coming out these bottom holes. So nothing will come out of there. Now, when I'm ready to put this back together, all I do is put the screen back in and then screw this back on top. Now, time to check it out and see if it works. So, our irrigation controller is over here. It's been turned off for the winter time and I can turn it on. So see it says off. Turn it on auto. I've mentioned before that every bed in this garden has a label on it. There's the one that's going to have the straw barrels in it and that says number five. This is the one that we've just been working on. It's bed number eight. Here's the base of one of the rosemary plants. And you can see the individual little hose coming out right here. And it's got one of those simple little stakes to hold it in place so that it doesn't go anywhere, so that the, it's actually watering the bottom of this. Now, I don't have an end plug on that. Fits into the end of the hose. It reduces the amount of flow, and it does keep dirt and bugs from getting in. Now, we run our irrigation every day. I haven't had a problem with that. I sometimes do reduce the flow so that some plants get less water. But you'll see how this is nicely bent down there now. 
so that the water is simply going to flow into the bottom of this. Here's the tickweed I was talking about. Tickweed sounds so awful. Tick seed, actually. Um, I actually haven't noticed that they look like ticks to personally. Maybe it's because they stick to your clothes. But they, this makes a gorgeous flower. So I just give it a little bit of water every year to encourage that. Now, because I'm just going to try this, I'm going to run it on manual. So I'm going to hit enter manual. So now remember that was station number eight. Eight. Okay, I'm going to run it for three minutes. And now we'll see if it works. I can hear it down here. It is dripping on its way up to the flower bed. And it'll take a minute longer to get up here. And there it is. You can see it going into the bird bath. And that means that these bird baths will be filled first thing in the morning. I usually run it for just a brief period. And then when the birds come in, they have water. And this is a big deal. We really get a beautiful display of birds here because we provide water. And this will simply run until the, I think I said it for three minutes, until the three minutes is up, and then it'll shut off. And what I do when I set up something like this is I make sure that all the different pieces are working. I have these, which are set up as individual feeds, which are working fine. I can see that the central um, irrigation in here is dripping where I want it to. And I can see the rosemary over here is getting water. And so is the rosemary over there. So the only other thing that's left is this one. And there it is. It's getting a drink of water. So. It'll run until that timer is done, and then it'll shut off. So it's really not hard. This makes a huge difference. And not having to think about whether my bird baths are full every day is a really nice thing. Well, I hope this inspires you to come up with your own uses for irrigation. A couple of people have said, well, why don't you put the bird baths closer to the outlet so you don't have to run such long lines? Well, it's very simple. My kitchen window's right over there, and I like to see the birds up close. And from there, I have a pair of binoculars and a couple of bird books, and I can spot birds all summer long. This, there's a crook here. I don't know how well you can see it because it's kind of on edge right now, that I need to start using because we've seen our first hummingbirds of the season. So it's time for me to put the hummingbird feeder up there and then we'll have yet another kind of bird to watch. So think of your birds, think of your plants and don't hesitate to use irrigation. It makes a huge difference. It runs whether I'm home or not. So if I go away for a couple of days, the birds still get a drink and so do my plants. See you next time, bye. Yeah, <laughs> you can teach people about irrigation. The only irrigating you do is tinkling on things.